um, please, please, please uh, make an effort to do those um, those those puzzles and those problems. And uh, like I've said, if you guys have any questions, you guys can uh, always ask me about that. All right. So let's get right into it. Let me just share the screen here. All right, share. That's fantastic. All right, so I hope you guys are all on lead chess. Uh, it looks like, um, uh, what is this here? It looks like some of you, more of you are on the lead chess than are on the Zoom. I don't know what's happening today. Normally everyone's on the Zoom and no one's on the lead chess. Now today, uh, we've got people on, on the lead chess, but not on the Zoom. Anyway, uh, guys, like I said, I prefer you to be on the lead chase in the background with the Zoom for communication purposes only, but uh, it's up to you guys. Uh, what the ID and the password for the Zoom are? Um, all right, let me see if I can find that here. Excuse me for a second, guys. I'm just going to type this in for one of our... So that's the meeting ID. Guys, the password for those of you who are on here will always be chess. It'll be chess until they force me to change it. Maybe there'll be a certain limit or whatever of times that I can use the same password. But if they don't do that, then uh, I will retain the password as chess. All right. Um, Let's get into things. Um, we have a little position. We have a little position here. I noticed that some of you um, actually pop onto the study a little bit earlier. I, I don't actually have a problem if you do that. Um, that's fine. And then you can already start sort of working through the stuff. Maybe get a bit of a jump on uh, what we're doing. Um, as I've asked you guys before, try and come on time, please. It is quite disruptive when I have to keep in, like adding people during the course of the lesson. And obviously, you're missing part of the lesson. I mean, who wants that? Uh, it doesn't make any sense. So uh, try to be on time. Okay. For those of you who were on time, thank you very much. Let's move on. White to play. There's a nifty little tactic here. I will give you a clue. It is I want you to look to the night. The clue is with the knight. Wow, I feel like that's a massive clue. Uh, but I want everybody getting this first one right, and we can march on from there. All right, so let's move. Uh, white to play and win. It's not a mate. It's not a mate. You can see white's actually a piece down in this position. He's got a bit of a kingside attack going on here. Um, there's also a piece on pre that he can probably take. It looks like if you go queen b6, black will go bishop g6 and sort of win the piece back. Then it looks like black's still going to be a piece up and uh, probably in a, in a winning position or at least in a better position, let's say. So white needs to find a nice little tactic. Uh, Daniel, I see you have a raised hand and I appreciate that, but I would much rather you just type the answer in um otherwise we're going to start a precedent here where everyone's going to be raising hands and uh speaking on the microphone which i would prefer we don't do so sorry about that but thank you for that uh, hand raising very nice all right so we also had 97 from both keanu and uh, daniel that looks good guys um it looks like a traditional little fork, and it is a traditional little fork. I think there's a bit of a, a spanner thrown into the works because it looks like, wait a minute, can't this rook just take the knight? And then you realize, wait a second, that rook is actually pinned. So currently, this rook cannot move off this diagonal because the queen is pinning the rook to the king. And uh, that sort of makes it uh, not part of, uh, of the game. So knight e7 check. And that looks like we're going to pick up some juicy material. It's going to be approximately six points plus because we'll get uh, the queen for nine and we'll lose the knight for three, which uh, is, is pretty nice. We're quite happy with that. Let's move on. So uh, let's see. It's probably king of eight or king h8. Either one has to happen. Uh, I suppose it's h7 as well. Doesn't look very convincing though. Um, let's go f8. 
Guys, just as a general rule here, I'd recommend moving the king to the corner of the board. As you can see, I've kind of broken our general rule. That's why I thought it's necessary for me to mention it here. Um, but okay, so king of eight, knight c8, uh, probably rook c8. Even rook c8, it's a tricky decision to make uh, because there is queen b6 happening straight afterwards. The thing is, I don't know what else really black can do. Maybe move the bishop. And this is the problem, you know, the whole position, when you take a big hit like that, uh, the whole position starts to collapse. Uh, and that's what we've just seen here. Now white's gone from being a piece down to a queen for a bishop up. And uh, all of a sudden, it looks like white is just crushing. Let's move on. Nicely done. Thanks those for those guys who, who uh, participated. Guys, remember, as always, uh, get involved. You know, I want you typing in uh, messages. I want you saying, yes, this is the move. That's the move. I want a little bit of analysis. I want participation. All right, let's move on. We've got a nice position here. This is a bit of a double-edged one. I think um, just quickly before we get into the move for white, what I can actually do here... No, I'm actually not going to do that. Let's find, I was going to flip the board around and see the move for black. But actually what I want to do is I want you to see the move for black from white's position. So we are going to keep the board this way, one and two for the white side. And we're going to find the move, we're going to find the move for, for black here. Just type it in. So we're first looking for a move for black and uh, then we'll get onto it and we'll find the actual move for white. So I see Keanu's come up with something, rook takes. Guys, how do you notate rook takes? Queen f3. Queen f3 looks pretty juicy. It looks like queen f3, there is queen g2 um, as a response. Um, there we go. So correct notation, guys. And this is also, I think this serves that purpose as well. Helps you guys to practice a bit of your notation. So you've got rook h2. Oh, and I forgot something at the end. It's a check. So you need to add a plus at the end of the move. So, and this will actually result in mate. There'll be no possible way for white to defend themselves in this position. Uh, so rook h2 forces the queen to take on h2. And then black can just take queen h2. And that'll result in mate. I guess you could argue rook takes the final move. Rook takes queen on h2, then king here, and then deliver the mate on these squares. Either way, when it's mate, it's mate. And uh, we don't have to worry too much about the different variations of mate there. So that being said, white has some uh, obvious concerns. I mean, uh, this is a definite, uh, definite scary threat that white has to deal with. White does have this rook in the same uh, rank as the king, and there are some discovered check possibilities that uh, are definitely available here. So guys, give me the winning move for white, please. You've got 30 seconds. Let's go. Okay, a nice move. Thank you for that. All right, we've got two people involved. What about the rest of you? What about the rest of you? Zabos from Blomestein. Come on, guys. I saw Zachary around here somewhere. Let's, let's get involved, guys. Otherwise, we've got just Keanu and Daniel solving your problems for you. It's not going to work. Hope you guys are staying warm. It's definitely been a little bit colder of late since I last saw you guys. Okay, a nice Bishop B5. Thank you. That was uh, Jason. Thank you, Jason. Very nice. All right, so guys, any move with this bishop, and this is quite important, so I want you to pay attention. Any move, um, okay, uh, well, that's fine. Guys, for those of you struggling with the lead chess chat, remember you're welcome 
to type in the Zoom. Like I said, it's a little bit more, um, slightly more inconvenient for me to look at, but I'd rather you type in the Zoom than not type at all. So please, please, please send me those messages, uh, get involved. We can, you can probably try and investigate any issues that you got with the lead chess chat, maybe later on. Um, I'd recommend, I do always put the study out in the night before so you guys can come in, maybe type something in there and just see if you can type and just make sure that it works. You can also go back to the old studies, they're public studies, they're available to all of you guys um, and just try and check if you can get your chat room chat to work just so that we don't have this issue going forward. So as I was saying, any uh, move with the bishop will result in a check with the king. And the first thing I always look at is I look at what can I do with this bishop? You know, what damage can I do? So I'll be honest with you. The first move I looked at was bishop f5 check. And then I looked at maybe I'm taking here. Okay, you know, am I going to get a mate on the king? Looks like the king still got quite a few squares after I check him. So it doesn't really look like good enough. And then, of course, I know you guys are always looking for a way to get to the queen. So any move with the bishop. That opens the check and then boom, I'm picking up a queen. That sounds like good news. Uh, and that's just a free queen. That's what it boils down to. We're just picking up a queen for free. And that's enough to turn, uh, turn the tables big time here. So bishop b5 check. Probably king g6 is good. Bishop takes e2. And then, I don't know, it's debatable whether or not black should take this. Uh, he's giving up the two rooks for the queen. Probably not the right move might just be simpler to take this and okay it's still not uh, game over just yet it's basically the queen and the bishop against the two rooks three or oh, nine plus three is 12 against 10 so yes the queen and the bishop are better but not a huge amount better and the other thing that you need to realize here is that these pawns excuse me these pawns over here big deal Pass pawns, no interruption, supported by a queen. That's why black is going to be so bust in this position, not just the queen and the bishop against the rooks. Okie dokie, let's move on. We've got another little discovered check lurking in the midst here. Some juicy options. Looks like black is quite a lot of material down. We've got two pieces, two pieces, so that's cool. Uh, rook for rook. And basically what it seems like is it's queen against, or sorry, rook against queen. That's what it's boiling down to in this one. Uh, so white's ahead on material, but black has some nifty attacks. Black to play. Let's find a winning move, please, guys. 30 seconds. Chat's flying in. I love it. Get involved, guys. So we got Daniel and Zachary quite excited about knight c3. I know they're always on the queen hunt, hey? Um, nothing wrong with that. Does look to me like you are picking up a queen. Knight f2 also looks like we are picking up a queen. So now the question is which one is better and ultimately why? That's where things are going to get interesting. So I mean you could argue knight f2, king g1, knight d1. Then probably rook d1. Okay, so what's happened there? I've picked up a queen for the for the cost of a knight. That's a pretty sweet deal. It's basically the same thing. I'll do it in a different color here. Knight c3 check, king g1, knight d1, rook d1. Very much the same thing. Um, and you're picking up knight, uh, queen for knight, should I say. Then black actually moves into the lead from a material perspective because then he'll have rook against knight because black will have uh, white will have rook against rook bishop against bishop and then it'll be this rook against this knight uh which will turn the tides interestingly enough here and this is um uh, a famous grandmaster quote that says if you see a good move look for a better one and um that holds true to just about any position so just because you've seen a good move doesn't mean that you should just jump on it automatically be like just you know play it without even a second thought uh, because there is a better move lurking here there's actually a mate i'm quite confident that no one would have come across this mate because we're too excited about winning the queen we're like we don't even give anything else a second thought you know the queen is available and we're going to just take that queen 
not interested in looking at any other possibilities. So the correct move is Knight F2. Uh, like I told you uh, last week, guys, if you really want to give a depth, in-depth analysis, then you go on and give a second move like Keanu's done here. Um, because with just one move, knight f2 could mean a bunch of things. I mean, maybe your plan was to go knight g4. I don't know. Maybe your plan was to come knight d3. I know you guys. So I know your plan was to take that queen. <laughs> but the point is, without further explanation, I'm just guessing. You know, that's what, it, that is what it comes down to. So knight f2, like we said, if you took the queen, you'd be in a winning position, but you're still going to have to work hard. This is going to be an end game. It's going to be a good 15, 20 moves, maybe at least 20 moves of hard work. And Keanu spots it uh, just now with knight h3 delivering mate. Boom. A nice classy little finish here. Uh, the knight and the bishop mate the king. Very nice. Again, this is an example. We, we did the uh, double checks quite extensively last week. So I thought I don't want to throw too many of them into this week's mix. Um, but again, the double check, a critical part of this one, because when there's two checks, the king has to move. So no other moves were possible to be considered. It had to be knight f2. Uh, it had to be king g1, sorry, rather. Then knight h3 is mate. Fantastic. Okay, this one, a uh, little bit slower position, no mates, at least not right away. There's certainly a nice target square. We're looking at this one from Black's perspective, and White's thinking, hmm, I wish I could just make this move happen. Uh, of course, we do see this often when this one side or the king side is fianchettoed. Uh, that's what it's called when you put the bishop on these, uh, on these squares. You fianchetto the bishop. And now that fianchetto bishop has been removed, which creates some weaknesses, some light square weaknesses around the king, which are quite suitable to target if you're looking at it uh, from an uh, like, uh, opposition perspective. So Black's loving it. He wants to attack. Currently, he's down on material. It's bishop against rook. Uh, Black to play. I'll give you guys 30 seconds to find me a nice continuation. See what you guys can come up with. It's a nice one, Keanu. I like it. Uh, he's talked about queen d2. He's looking at, let's make this one in green. And then uh, he's looking at the f2 square. And he's also looking at the bishop on b2. It's quite a nice one. I do feel that white, unfortunately for you, has a satisfactory defense. Queen e4. All right. I mean, I like queen e4. I'm always keen to take a rook, but I'm a little worried that this rook is taking back here. Um, so, yeah, no, that one's not going to cut it. Um, queen d2 also, like I said, you're looking here, but it seems like maybe white can either bring the queen back. They need to just put either a rook or a queen on uh, e2, and that way they'll defend this whole rank. So they defend this problem and this problem at the same time. But nice try, guys. I'm loving it. I want you guys getting involved. So what? If you get a wrong answer, nothing is wrong with that. It's all part of the learning experience. And if you just sit there and sort of stare blankly, I guarantee you, you won't learn as much as if you get involved. So rather get involved, give me some answers, try some stuff out. I like Rookie 8. Thank you. That was a nice one. Very strategic sort of move, I think, especially with the king being on h7, um, it looks juicy. One thing you would have to worry about ordinarily would be what if white just takes the rook and then it's check. Then they check you, you have to move the king, and then they just put the rook back. And that would backfire nasty. But fortunately, in this case, king's on h7, and rook e8 seems like quite a nice move. I mean, obviously, uh, there's a little bit of bait being thrown out there. He's like, come on, help yourself to the free rook. And then after rook e8, um, black's just going to mate white with queen g2. 
So a nice little idea there, very, very nice. I think uh, there's better moves on offer, mainly because if White's smart, he can maybe play something like Queen C4 or perhaps Queen E2 and just defend this rook. So you add an extra attacker, White gets smart about it and adds an additional defender. Um, and I think that way he's able to sort of hold this position together. But very nice move. So we've had queen d2, we've had queen e4, we've had rook e8. Uh, all fairly interesting tries, but none of them are the correct move. I'll give you guys a clue here, and I think rook e8 is very close to that. And that is trying to remove this rook. If this rook wasn't here, I'm mating you. I need to get this rook out of here. How do I do that? Sometimes asking you, or like breaking it down, simplifying it for yourself can help you to come up with the, the solution a little bit easier. And there we go. Comes up with the gold. Keanu, thank you. F5, nice move. So that's it. I mean, the rook is the problem. Let's target the problem. And uh, I think in chess, Simple chess is good chess. Always try to keep your life simple. Don't overcomplicate things. Uh, and in this case, no different here. F5 pressuring the E4 rook. Um, so basically, white has a choice. Move the rook and get mated or lose the rook. It's an easy choice when you say it like that. Obviously, I just have to lose the rook. I can't afford to get mated. Getting mated is the worst possible thing that can happen for, to me on the board. Uh, so probably something like, I think white's in a bit of danger, so you might want to trade the queens. You could imagine something like this happening. Still, though, trading the queens helps to improve your structure, but something like this. Which means now white's just a piece down and uh, it's a fairly comfortable position for black. Again, whenever you're winning on material, you want to trade the pieces. And uh, that simplifies the position and makes your life easy. Let's move on to some other discussion. So that was cool. I felt like we got some good brains warmed up. There was some good tactical things. Now we also need to take a step back and uh, we'll do a bit of opening analysis here as promised last week. Last week, we looked at it more a little bit from uh, the black pieces perspective. Today, we're gonna take a look at um, some potential openings that you guys might wanna try out as white. So, I mean, I've given you guys already some options. I'm gonna throw in some more options here. Um, obviously there's lots of chess openings out there and I'd like to give you guys a few at least decent options which you guys can play around with. You don't want to be playing the same chess opening for the rest of your life. Might make things a little bit boring. And, uh, you know, we want to spice it up a little bit, keep your lives interesting, expose you to different positions, learn more structures, et cetera, et cetera. All right, let's move. So today uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about the London opening that is essentially D4 and Bishop F4. Um, some of you might have already been playing this without knowing the name of the opening, and uh, that's fine. I mean, knowing the names is not really going to help you a great deal. It's far more important to understand, you know, what you're trying to achieve and where the pieces go. So D4, D5, pretty standard move um, for Black. Black obviously also wants a bit of piece of the center. It doesn't just want to let White do whatever he uh, he wants. So Knight F6. Again, if we go down to simple things. Um, Pawns in the center, develop your pieces, castle your king. Very, very important. Make sure you're always doing those things. Doesn't matter which opening you choose. All openings are good as long as you play them properly. So bishop f4, the idea here is just that I can go e3 immediately and bishop d3. Um, I'm not locking this bishop in. I like the knight f3 version. So let's go with that one. e6, e3. Bishop e7. This is also a normal continuation for black. Black not wasting time, wants to develop and castle as quickly as possible. Uh, white will do the same. Uh, problem that black has here is that this bishop now is a bit locked in due to this pawn. If that happens, and I, you could presume that this happened by design from black, he's going to now go this way with the bishop. Maybe something like b6 and bishop b7 makes sense over here so b6 
White's got two options. Um, he can either go C3 and Knight BD2. That's traditional London. And I think I'll, I'll show you guys that one today. So we've almost got like a, a triangle structure here um, with the white pieces. Nice and solid. Very difficult to break that open. Knight BD2. Remember, both knights can go to D2. So this knight pops in there. Nice and easy. Um, knight D7. Nothing wrong. And like you've seen, I mean, black's probably going to go C5 to expand. White's going to go knight E5 and then knight D to F3 and just sort of continue. Probably knight E5 here anyway. Guys, you can probably double check this uh, in the openings books. And uh, on Lee Chess, they have quite a nice openings book um, facility where you can compare your opening theory and see what grandmasters and what top players have played these positions. I imagine this position will be fairly um, well played, comprehensively played by a lot of top players. It's fairly good for both sides. And uh, that's what you want. You know, you want to be learning positions that, uh, that are good and that are, are played at a high level of chess. So C5 expanding a little bit on the queen side. Probably not worth taking. I think uh, black also didn't really want to take this knight. Guys, remember whenever it comes to exchanging pieces, pawns, whatever the, whatever the case, you've got to ask yourself, who does it help more? Why do I want to exchange my knight for your knight? I mean, is it helping me? Is it to my benefit? Am I gaining something out of that? Maybe, maybe not. But it's important that you ask yourself that question uh, before just jumping into an exchange. So knight f3, this is good because it now supports the knight on this square. And uh, white's just slowly but surely advancing forward and, and controlling key squares. Rook c8 makes sense here. Next mission is to activate the rooks. And uh, try to uh, improve the position at the same time. Guys, just keep those microphones muted, please. Thank you. Um, let's think of a nice idea for white. So I'm actually kind of inclined to take this and jump the other knight in. Uh, another interesting option, I could get greedy and try and get in e4 at the right time. But there's some pieces here that are targeting this e4 square. And this is the thing, when both parties or both players play good moves, then it creates like these very um, interesting, tightly knit positions. Uh, so rookie one would be a good move that just includes or improves the rook and uh, maybe I can look to play this at the right time. And then maybe I could expand a little bit on the queen side with ideas like a5, a4. Also nothing wrong there. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think that's good. All Both sides have developed their pieces, got a good control of the center, uh, castled the king, and that's pretty much what you want. I'm going to go through it once more quickly before we move on to the, the, the e4 uh, opening I want to show you. So that's d4, d5, bishop f4. I think bishop f4 is the critical one, and then if you just remember the triangle. that Because remember, you won't remember it all at once, and that's why you just remember bits and pieces until you can lock the opening into the brain. Bishop d3 is easy. Like I said, guys, if you put maybe the bishop on this square instead of d3, it's not the end of the world. As long as you're developing the pieces, as long as you're not wasting moves, that's very important. Every move counts. Uh, make each move a useful one. Don't just play a3 because you didn't know what else to do. Try and make it constructive moves that improve your position. So c3... Uh, solidifying our triangle, and then we talked about 95 with supporting this knight. I think at any time, if black were to take this, uh, we'd take back with a pawn, and that weakens this knight, and now then weakens this h7 square. So maybe we're going to be able to make something happen on h7. Of course, there's nothing wrong with knight takes e5 as an alternative. We don't ruin our structure. Uh, we're not going to maybe get any attack going on h7, but uh, this is also good at the same time. So in the other one, rook c8 and then rook e1, and we called it quits here. You could say this would be the completion of the opening, and from here, we jump into the middle game. We start trading pieces, attacking, and doing things like that. But a good opening sets you in a good uh, position and a good start so you can play a good game. 
Let's move on. So that was a D4 opening. And now we're going to discuss an E4 opening. Not everybody plays D4. Not everybody plays E4. These just, by the way, are the two best moves in the start. Um, yeah, I mean, in my opinion, at least. Uh, C4 is also considered to be a fairly good opening move. Knight F3 is also pretty good. Uh, but I think you want to try and take charge of that center as quickly as possible. And there's no better way to do it than throw some pawns there. All right, so e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5. This is a position that I think a lot of you are quite familiar with and one that I was quite keen to discuss with you guys because um, it impacts so many of you. So c3, um, and this is where things get a little different. I think most of us, we're used to the normal Italian game where white generally goes knight c3, knight f6, castles d6 then you can choose to play h3 to prevent the bishop coming to g4 quite a commonly used idea uh then d3 again looking here so white black plays h6 now this is good it's solid it's even played at a high level but it does sometimes feel a little bit stale um a little bit unexciting both sides struggle to generate a big attack so i wanted to mix it up a bit today with uh move 4 c3 and uh, that's pretty good with our uh, potential to attack the center immediately. Okay, so C3 with the idea to play D4. I actually need to change this on the study. For whatever reason, I wrote 5C3. It is 4C3. My apologies for that error. So knight f6 is a common move here, looking at the e4 square. That's actually the best move that black can play here. It leads to some complications. I'm going to show you another version first before we get into that one. Let's say black plays d6. The idea here is that I just get d4 in. Uh, ooh, that pawn's going some places. I just get d4 in, and now the c pawn's going to take back if he takes me. And now I've got a beautiful center here. With bishop check, knight c3 is a nice, um, is a nice way around this. So, And then, of course, next move, I just castle. I think it's safe to say this position is slightly better or better for white. Um, black's misplayed it slightly. But so what? It will probably happen in quite a few of your games. So this C3, D4 idea, fairly common, um, especially at a higher level of chess. But it's a good one. I want you guys to look at it. I want you to investigate it. And I want you to play it in your games. So let's talk about Knight F6 here, because Knight F6 is a stronger move for black and probably a more critical variation that needs to be discussed. So... White continues with d4. This gets interesting, though, you'll see. So ed, cd, and then bishop check. Uh, and the idea here, black now sneaks in a check because he's hoping he's going to win this pawn. So there's some tricks and some traps happening here. I think if black were to just play bishop b6, it would be a sort of subpar move. And white can probably just play e5, but a bit uncomfortable for black here. Alternatively, knight c3, also a good move defending the e4 pawn. Um, okay, and then sort of just continue. Again, you continue with development, activate all your pieces, um, and then attack through the center. So like I was saying, bishop b4 check is uh, the critical one here. Bishop d2, and most of the time, black does take on d2, and then there's knight takes d2, and the knight defends the pawn and sort of the game goes on from here it's fairly equal good for both sides playable for both sides there's a nifty little trick that i want to share with you guys uh before i let you go here and that is if black just simply takes the pawn on e4 white has this little um tactic shall we call it so bishop b4 knight b4 and he's able to win the pawn back with this idea of queen b3 which hits the knight on b4 and through the bishop diagonal attacks this f7 square so if white plays queen b3 straight away i think d5 well d5 definitely is a bit of an inconvenience uh for white and i think black actually gets away here 
So the best move is to first go bishop takes f7. Then if king f7, now queen b3 check. Again, basically the same idea. Uh, I sack the piece for a pawn, but I get the piece back. So I just win a pawn. And d5 is a very important move here for black. Otherwise, this king is going to be in big, big trouble. So d5 is played. Queen takes b4, wins the pawn back. Okay, so let's just go back to recap here, guys. Very familiar to uh, to most of you, and uh, a lot of you have played the Italian game in your life where you just sort of develop with knight f3, bishop c4, knight c3. This one, a little bit different. Instead of placing the knight on c3, it's now about putting the pawn on the c3 square with the idea of playing pawn to d4. It's the one that I hope you guys will, will give a go. Uh, and just try to to learn these structures and play something a little bit different. I think it will give you a little bit more of an aggressive attacking game, which I think for the most part is good news for most of you guys. Uh, just a reminder, we've still got some time left here. Um, so I want you guys to preferably play. I'll show you quickly now whilst the screen is shared. I want you guys here. I'm highlighting the rapid time controls. This is where you want to be. Uh, even 10 minutes might be a bit short. I'd recommend 15 plus 10. Just again, the plus 10 is increment. It's additional time given per move made. So you get 10 seconds extra per move. Or the classicals are also good. So let's try and play. I'd like you guys all to play two games now. Remember, all you have to do is just click on the time control. The system automatically pairs you with an opponent who is similarly rated to you. And that's what I like about this because you play against people who are similar strengths. It's not just about playing against the same people all the time. There are, as you can see here, 69,000 and something players playing right now. There are 28,000 and something games currently in progress. So there's lots of chess being happening right now on the site. And uh, I'd love for you guys to be part of that. Remember, keep practicing. Um, keep up the chess. It's all about consistency and a little bit of work um, every week. Just try and keep your heads in the game. Stay focused. Guys, I hope you're all having uh, a good time. And I hope you guys are all looking after yourselves. Okay? Stay safe out there. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Take care. All the best. Bye-bye.